A lot of you guys really liked the video that I did on my Visual Studio Code setup, so much so that I've decided to do a few more. In today's video we're going to be looking at keyboard shortcuts, I feel this is probably the more important thing to kind of get out of there because you know once you know uh, keyboard shortcuts your productivity and your speed goes up miles. It's nuts. Just like flitting around everywhere at a hyperspeed is very satisfying and keyboard shortcuts allow you to do that. Before we get into it I do want to mention an extension um, that changes all your keyboard shortcuts to those of Vim. So if there's anyone out there that's been considering going to Vim but thinks it looks a little bit scary then you can actually modify all, all your keyboard shortcuts in Visual Studio Code so you can stay in familiar space. You still have you know, full mouse control. Everything's familiar but you use Vim keyboard shortcuts instead so you can learn them um, in a you know in a slightly more friendly environment. I'm not personally interested in doing that, I don't even know what the extension is called, but I thought I would mention that for people that wanted to know. Um, the rest of this video is going to be going over the keyboard shortcuts that I use often, although I will be showing you where to find more, so in case you know there's stuff that you know, is better for other languages and whatever. We're just going to be doing all these things on this code here. This is what I did my last video on. There'll be a video in the cards if you want to go see that uh, on context managers. I just thought you know it's a good example piece. So I want to start with some easy stuff. Obviously everyone knows how to save a file, Control S, but there is actually a way to save multiple files at once. So if I were to go here and you know change, if I were to change this to files instead of file, it makes it inaccurate but whatever, and I'll just change this to open files. You can see at the top here uh, that we have two unsaved icons in two separate files. If you wanted to save them both at once, we can do Control K, release that, and hit S. And you can see they've both come up. And what we just used was a chord. So chords are used in Visual Studio Code quite a lot. And they are essentially multiple keyboard shortcuts designed to do like a single action. Most keyboard shortcuts are activated using Control K. So Control K, you see down the bottom, Control K was pressed waiting for second key of chord. I'm just going to hit escape, which isn't a command. But it does allow you, if I just do this again, so Control K S to do some cool little things. So that's a nice little function if you didn't know that existed. In terms of other keyboard combinations, I really like to be able to navigate files using the keyboard you know I even got a comment once saying that I use just everything on the keyboard to like highlight things and stuff like that and uh, that I should use Vim and whatever and I was like oh, I, I don't really want to use Vim but I, I do I did make me realize how much I actually rely on the keyboard and I have kind of a list of keyboard shortcuts that help so Control F is obviously find I imagine a lot of people know that Control H is actually find and replace which is I'm pretty sure that's a standardized shortcut, but I, f I feel like you know not as many people would know, so I thought I'd let you know. I mean, if you combine either of them with Control Shift, so Control Shift F searches all your files. So if I do File, we can see that there's a lot of matches between files, and this is actually searching all the Venv uh, as well for it. Um, and then we can do Control Shift H to do a find and replace across. In this case. 764 files. That's what happens when you do the, the Venv. In here as well, while I'm actually in here, you can do files to include and then files to exclude. So if you wanted to get rid of the Venv, you can do that. And it would only find the things in two files. That's quite a nice little touch. I don't know of a keyboard shortcut to bring this menu up. I don't think there's really a need for one though. Um, one that I do use an awful lot, which is you know based on the same thing, is Control D. So if I were to put my cursor here and hit Control D, it selects the full word. If I were to hit Control D again, it selects the next word, and the next word, and the next word after that, and the next word after that, if there is one. I don't think there is one actually. But it's just a really nice Control F, so you can kind of explicitly control um, which words are being selected. You may also notice that there's this menu coming up in the corner as well. So you can uh, set whether or not you match the case, whether or not you match whole words, um, and whether or not you want to use a regular expression. So that Control D is super useful. I believe Control K, Control D goes in the other direction, but I've never needed to know that, so I don't know for sure. That's just what I've looked up. For all you mouse lovers out there, Visual Studio Code does have some shortcuts for that as well. So obviously, you know, you can click around, but if you say you wanted to 
you know, append to this file and this file or uh, this method and this method. I don't know why I call them files. I've got file handling in my head too much. You can actually use, you can actually press and hold alt and then click. And suddenly we have two cursors. So I can come down here and print hello world in two separate places that we can go back up and do this. Um, another way you can do that is control shift and then use the arrow keys. Oh, no, it's control alt. Oh, it's control alt and the arrow keys, sorry. So, oh god. So you can expand the selection in different ways and then you can kind of move around them if you want. So you can actually have the cursor in multiple places at the same time, which is extremely useful uh, in a number of instances. So that's alt, click, and control alt arrow keys to kind of do, you know, multi-cursor navigation as I'm, I've am i now coined it. The terminal is also a really nice thing in Visual Studio Code, the integrated terminal. Uh, and there are a number of keyboard shortcuts for that as well. So if you do control and the apostrophe, so for anyone in Britain, that's the one to the left of the hash symbol. Uh, in the US, God knows. <laughs> oh, in the, in the US, that would be control shift two, no. Oh, it is in there. No, it's the speech marks that are the other way around, isn't it? It's 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 the one where the speech marks are. Um, in in the it's keyboards are weird, but you can click that. I just made that way more complicated than it needed to be. You can click that, and it focuses the active terminal. So you have if you have a terminal active at the time, it will focus it. If you don't, uh, it will actually create one for you. So that's really nice. It just it focuses your active terminal. Uh, and it also unfocuses it as well, so you can you can minimize it using that too. Or it creates one if one doesn't exist. If you want to create a new one anyway, you can hit Control and then Shift and then apostrophe, and you can create a new one. So you can see at the side, we're creating new terminals. Oh my god. And then we can delete them using the button. While there isn't a keyboard shortcut for deleting it, we can map it. I'm going to talk about some mappings of keyboard shortcuts near the end of the video. But there is one more thing that I just want to talk about first, and we're going to go into our hello txt file. And we're just going to spam just so we can get to the end of the video, because what I want, not the end of the video, the end of the line. And we can hit Alt Z, and we can, um, we can toggle the word wrap, which is really nice if you're doing documentation, if you're doing anything to do with JSON files, for example. RST files, Markdown files, HTML files, you know, LaTeX files, basically anything that isn't code. It's super useful to be able to do this. By default, word wrap is always off, but just Alt Z and you're there. If you have NVIDIA GeForce experience, it does actually trigger when Visual Studio Code comes up, so you might want to deactivate that or remap it um, if, you, if you need to be able to do that. So I mentioned a little bit earlier about being able to custom map keybinds and there's actually a keyboard shortcut conveniently enough to get into that menu. So we're using chords again, hit control K and without releasing control, hit S. So control K, control S, or you could just do, you know, control, you can press and hold control and hit KS consecutively and it will bring this menu up. And there are an awful lot of things that you can do with this. Um, there is a bit of a cheat sheet that I'm gonna show you at the end that kind of summarizes the basic ones, but there's a lot of things you can do. Um, but you can remap literally anything you want. So when it comes to you know closing a terminal, <clears throat> what you can search is kill terminal, and then you want this one here. So you can see I've already mapped it myself, but if I were to click this edit button to the side, I can you know uh, set the uh, the key combination, uh, so I can hit Control Alt, and then I'm going to use the apostrophe, and I'm just going to hit Enter. It will overwrite itself. Um, but now, if we were to bring a, a terminal up, if I were to hit Control Alt apostrophe, it's gone. I don't think that's mapped by default. Uh, for some reason, I had it as Control Alt hash. I'm not sure why that is. I'm not sure if that was the default. Oh, it says user here, so maybe it wasn't. Uh, I'm not 100% sure if that's map or not, but I would say that's a really good one to map if you wanted to. Another really good one to map if you're using Python is to sort imports. Uh, so if you go into any Python file and you right click, you have this sort imports option down here. Uh, by default, that's not mapped to anything, but if you wanted to, you could do sort imports. You can search it up and then click that. And I use control K and then I. Uh, I'm gonna be you know, overwriting itself again. 
But control ki will now sort key um, will now sort these things. So if I were to do import abc and then control ki, there we go. I've now sorted my imports and I can you know, move them back and do whatever. Another particularly useful keyboard shortcut that I like to map is to format the code. This one is a little bit jankier because iSort is provided with the Python extension. Formatting libraries like black and that aren't. So they have to be installed and then sometimes it doesn't quite work. It's a bit annoying, uh, but you can still do format and it's actually format document. And it's this one here. So we can do, in my case, control K F. And this gives me a little bit of an opportunity to have, to show you about like conflictions and stuff and talk about the when. So there are two actions that have control K F. This when parameter, can I make this? I can. That's beautiful. Uh, this when parameter you know, provides a context of when certain things should happen. So in this case, when the editor has document formatting provider and the editor has a text focus and the editor is not read only and we're not in a composite editor, whatever that means, we will format the document when we hit control KF. Otherwise, if um, we have empty workspace support, I don't know what that means either, but if our workbench state is not empty, then we will close the workspace um, when we hit control F. So that's what happens when you kind of merge keybinds together. You can have different keybinds that do different things at different times. It can get a bit confusing at times, um, so I'd potentially recommend not doing that. But if you do custom key maps, you probably are gonna have to live with it uh, a little bit. But yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to show off in terms of what I use. Um, you know, I do use quite a few keyboard shortcuts to get around. However, this is by no means an exhaustive list. As there is, um, this Visual Studio Code PDF. Now I will just have a direct link to the PDF in the description below for you to look at this. But these are the default keyboard shortcuts for Windows. There are a lot of them. There are nowhere near as many as there were in Visual Studio Code. You can of course map pretty much anything you want. So for example, formatting code is not on here. Sorting imports is not on here, but something like, you know, add selections and X find match can be control D is on here. So this is kind of a nice little cheat sheet that I wish I knew existed when I started using Visual Studio Code some two or three years ago now or something crazy. Um, but if you want to, you know, have a, a look at all the different things you can do by default in Visual Studio Code, then you can, you know, look in the description and grab the PDF from there. You also now know, you know, some of the really useful things it can do. And you also now know how to create your own key mappings, which I would recommend doing, especially for killing terminals and stuff. If you want to be able to, you know, improve your productivity with things that you do all the time. If you found the video helpful at any point, then consider liking it to let me know and subscribing so you don't miss out on future videos like this. Um, if you have any questions about anything you've seen in the video and feel free to leave a comment. I don't buy it, I promise. I'm here to help you. So feel free to ask anything. I'll try and answer it the best I can. While you're down there, you can also hit the join button if you really liked it, or if you prefer, I am on Patreon as well. You can find a link to that in the description. Either one you do, one pound a month, you end up on this screen like these people. And I will see you next time where hopefully, actually genuinely this time, Perfect Python will return. Exams are fun. Exam revision is fun. Um, soz, I guess. Uh, so I'll, I'll see you for that.